Our next example of a quadric surface is called a cone. The equation for a cone, well, the basic version looks like z squared over c squared equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. The key feature of this is that all of the terms are quadratic. So there's no constant term and no linear term. Now, the fact that all terms are quadratic means that this is invariant under scaling. What do I mean by that? It means that if x, y, z is a solution, and lambda is a scalar, then lambda x, lambda y, lambda z is also a solution. Because when I plug lambda x, lambda y, and lambda z into the equation, I just multiply everything by lambda squared, so the equation still holds. So that means that the surface is a union of lines through the origin. Now to get a better picture, so let's look at the intersections with the coordinate planes. So if we set z equals 0, then the only solution is x equals 0 and y equals 0. If we set y equals 0, we get the equation z squared over c squared equals x squared over a squared. Now we can take the square root of both sides and we have to put in a plus or minus sign so we get that z over c equals plus or minus x over a. And this curve is two lines. So there's one line where z over c is plus x over a and another line where z over c is minus x over a. So they look like this. So this line has slope c over a. So here, as usual, I'm assuming that a, b, and c are positive. And this line has slope minus c over a. So this has two lines. And likewise, if I said x equals 0, I also get two lines. And the full surface looks like this. And again, the horizontal slices are ellipses. Because if you set z equal to a constant, you get the equation for an ellipse in the xy plane. Our next example of a quadric surface is an elliptic paraboloid. This is where we have one linear term and two positive quadratic terms. For example, z over c equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. 
Let's assume as usual that A, B, and C are positive. So if we set Z equals zero to find the intersection with the XY plane, we just get one point, the origin. It's more interesting to look at other horizontal slices. So if we set Z to be a constant, which is positive, then we get an ellipse in the XY plane. Or in the XY plane, sort of translated up by C. If we set Z to be a constant, which is negative, we get the empty set. Because again, the sum of squares of real numbers can't be negative. We could also set y equals 0 to find the intersection with the xz plane. So if we ignore the y term, we have z over c equals x squared over a squared, and that's a parabola that looks like this. It's supposed to touch the origin here. And likewise, z equals 0, excuse me, x equals 0, gives us a parabola in the yz plane. The whole surface looks like this. So these horizontal slices here are ellipses. This is not quite the surface of revolution of a parabola. It would be a surface of revolution if A and B are equal. Otherwise, it's not quite a surface of revolution. Also, if we took C negative, we would get an upside down elliptic paraboloid, which would be below the XY plane.